Welcome to yet another edition of Hot Hoops here on Q30Television.com via Q30 Television and Q30 Sports. John Alva joined alongside by Q30 Sports beat reporter for basketball, alongside the executive producer of Sports Boss, Andrew Badillo. And we're trying something different today. It's a simulcast. I know some of you like throwing this on your iPhone or your iPod. Do they still make iPods? I don't know, John. What was that, like 20, 30 uh, do, years the ago? Nanos, Seems like the Stone the Age. Nanos I think we're in circulation for a little bit, but not anymore. I think it's primarily just the iPhone. So you can throw it on your iPhone as you jog around the TD Bank Sports Center or Burt Con or wherever you jog and listen to this and, hey, I totally get it. But if you feel like looking at our faces during this, we're going to do this simulcast and see how it goes. And today we are talking men's and women's basketball here at Quinnipiac. And both teams, Andrew, are on a roll right now. Men's basketball team 5-5, five and five, 500, believe it or not, in the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference the women are, they're decent, undefeated. Decent to, decent to say the least. Let's, let's talk about what happened this past week. Let's start with the women. They start this first half of MAC play undefeated, 9-0. and They finally pick up the win against Maris that it, the team has coveted for so long. Dominant first half team performance. What do you make of it? Well, John, I mean, you said it all there. Dominant first half performance, and it was Jekyll and Hyde, really. And it was second half performance. It was tapered off a lot in terms of shots that went in. I think they total over 70 shots in the game. They outshot Maris by about 30 shots. So, and Trish Fabry after the game came out and she was blatant by the fact that this team will stick to the game plan, running gun offense. Um, so, I mean, it, that's really all that needed to they're be gonna said. They're going to shoot a lot. They're going to shoot a lot and they're going to stick to their game plan and it's worked a lot this season. You have to wonder though, at some point, you're going to take 75 shots, and only 26% of them are going to go in. Do you worry that that happens in a playoff game, maybe? I mean, you have to, that has to be in the back of your head. Again, it does have to worry, it does worry me a little bit for this team, but at the same time, John, they, the teams like the level of play in the MAC has been down this season in terms of Iona and Marist. Brian George is after the game, the head coach for Maris, did say that they did lose a lot of players from last year's team. Iona has been a little bit off this season. And Quinnipiac, also with the addition of Val Driscoll, she's been an incredible asset to this team, replacing Brittany McQueen. And along with that, it has opened the floor for their shooters. Again, Jasmine Martin has been a little off this season, but I really don't think that I'm too worried about a team having an off night. Driscoll averaging 12 points per game, above seven rebounds per. That's the kind of production that Quinnipiac needed, especially with losing Brittany McQueen. I don't think anyone foresaw that. You know, I want to brand this right now. The team's running the gold rush again. First rotation we're going to refer to from here on out as the old rush, okay? To all seniors and a graduate student. I'm not saying that in a negative connotation. Uh, it's the experience line, the old rush. And then you have that gold rush coming in. The depth is is incomparable on anyone else in the conference. You got to think if they're going to lose at the end of the season, it's at their own doing because I don't think any of the other teams in the MAC are at the level that this team is right now. And you know, John, I 100% agree with you there. I mean, they bring off a solid second unit of players: Adelie Martucci, Brianna Ramos, Jen Fay, who has come into her own over the past few weeks. Coming into the season, people thought that she would be what Val Driscoll was—that dominant presence down low. But, how, but she has come on strong of late. Um, they have other players. Shuin. Um, Sarah Shuin came up huge in that Maris game. She added double-digit points coming off the bench at a few big threes. Uh, they just have a solid old, a new rush, gold rush, coming off the bench to replace that old just, rush. Just don't mess it up. Yeah. Gold rush, gold rush. A little gold bit rush, new to me. A little bit gold new. Gold rush. Yes. Gold rush, gold rush, new rush. <laughs> Regardless of what it is, the Quinnipiac Bobcats are having themselves quite a season to start 17-3 overall. 9-0 in conference play. Let's turn, Andrew, over to the men now. 5-5, five and five, finally at 500. This team, it, it seems like it's finding its identity, isn't it? Oh, yeah, for sure. And I have to applaud Tom Moore for sending the message to Usman Drame. And finally, it appears to be getting through his head saying, hey, I need you to step up. I need you to lead this team. Zaid Hurst has been doing it all season long, and I need you to realize that you are this incredible basketball player with incredible talent and that you need to sort of figure it out right now by sending him to the bench and 
getting him in that different mindset has really helped this team. I mean, he's come off in the past two, we two weeks, he's averaging 14 rebounds per game, 16 points. I mean, that's the old Usman drama that we're used to seeing. Averaging a double-double, picked up his 14th double-double of the season uh, this past week against Manhattan. That was a victory for Quinnipiac. That was a big one. Quinnipiac has had Mar uh, Manhattan's number uh, pretty much since joining the MAC, other than the playoffs, obviously, last year when Quinnipiac was without Umar Shannon. Now, part of that whole reeling off the tough start in the beginning of MAC play was because I think at least Quinnipiac didn't know what it was going to do with the point guard situation. Aaron Hudden step up. Evan Conti had himself a great game against Manhattan. It is. Are things starting to turn for this team, Andrew? Because I, I think they are, as long as what you said about drama is true, where he's busting every single game. I mean, he had scouts uh, at, at the game from the Jazz and from the Spurs. Uh, Nick Solari of the Quinnipiac Chronicle reporting that uh, the Brooklyn Nets are sending a scout as well to, for drama. Two guys in Hurst and Drame who are getting legitimate professional looks, you got to think to yourself, Quinnipiac's in a pretty good position right now. Yeah, John, I'm glad you said that, that they're in good position, but it all stems from the point guard position. You need to run the half-court offense in this league. Uh, Tom Moore said it after his game against Manhattan, that Manhattan works you as hard as, you, as any team in the MAC. They run that full-court press, and because of that full-court press, they will turn the ball over, and that means execution in the half-court will be that much more important. And without a point guard, you can't execute in the half-court offense. So I think that Dimitri Flores, Aaron Hutton, and really Evan Conti, Kassim Chandler, all are going to have to, as a collective group, sort of try to solidify that point guard position. Quinnipiac on Friday the 30th has Canisius on the road. The women's team has Siena on the road. So another opportunity for both these teams to, in one case, improve in the MAC, and in one case, continue to control the fort. That's all the time we got here for this edition of Hot Hoops. Don't forget, you can find out more about Hot Hoops and all of Q30 Sports' backs, basketball coverage and hockey coverage as well on Twitter at Q30 Sports and online at Q30Television.com. You can follow Andrew over here on Twitter at AJB underscore Q30 Sports. I got it? That is correct. I got it. Look at that. Not, no notes to help me out off the top of the noggin here. And if for some reason you want to hear what I have to say, at John Alba, S-C-J-O-N-A-L-B-A. SFC. That's all the time we got here on Hot Hoops. For Andrew Badillo, I'm John Alba. We'll see you next time.